This is the second video about the TCP server device core and we'll look at icons, string matrices and also how to use test tube, which is a testing tool for device cores. You can use it with this one and other device cores as well. So a little bit of the advanced stuff. But where we left off was we had a Frameshot Pro where we added um, some actions to um, uh, device core parameters, which were integers uh, and option list and a Boolean on a TCP server that we are also connected to over here. So I have two windows with the clients connected to the TCP server device core. And as an example, if I type in help, I see what are the commands that I can uh, run here. If I uh, type in a, a command like, yeah, I'm also connected down here, so you can see the same. But if I type in integer number one, which I think, no wait, this might be integer number 10, actually. Let's, let's just press this button over here because I have integers connected to this one. You see, as I'm pressing this, it's counting up. It's increasing the value of integer number 10. But if I copy this line, basically, and, and, and paste it in and change it to 250, uh, theoretically, I should be able to set that value. See, the reason why it won't do it is because I am limited in the value range for this one. No, wait, that's actually not true. Uh, like that. So now it's 250. It was probably like an additional line break character or whatever that prevented me from doing it right here. But uh, you saw that value change I just did was actually relayed to the other connected client and also over here in Reactor it is now shown. The same for the option list. We can go through some options and if we type in list you can see which options are actually being defined and these are some that you could define. So I could actually add another color which would be pink. And now we actually have pink in this list. So as I am going through, you see pink is coming out here as option number five. With all this, you are able to make TCP clients that connect into Reactor have meaningful stuff going on on the Skyhoy panel. And then Skyhoy panels are able to manipulate values that you can react on in your software, in your hardware, whatever connects as a TCP client into the TCP server. Uh, you can also change the values and so on. So that was a little introduction. Uh, in, in this next step, we want to uh, put icons onto the displays here. And I have, um, I've decided that we should take one of these buttons because these are on a Frameshot Pro color display. So if I, if I pick any of these, uh, we can set up a parameter for this one. I'll uh, once again uh, create a, 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 um, a behavior from scratch here. I just want to basically go straight to the feedback section because here we can set a title. And if I write, hey, for instance, then you see it writes, hey, in the display. Now, in this case, I actually want to do something with graphics. So I'll choose a graphic source uh, just to introduce you to it. If you pick icon and you pick any of these icons, it's put into the display. But we don't want icon, we want IO reference. And IO reference is a reference to a data source on our device. And now we stumble straight into a bug I also found when I prepared for this video. I am not able to set that IO reference and I don't know why. It won't come up with the um, with the uh, window where I can pick it. So maybe we have a chance to actually handcraft it in this case because I still want to show you that this is the case. So why do we have this issue? Well, because I'm actually running on a beta version, not even release beta, but of um, the configuration tab that has some new features and a new inspector tab coming out. So that's in itself exciting, but it has some, some quirks. Sending images over to the TCP server device core is actually quite simple. If we uh, open one of these uh, windows, I'll show you how it works. Unfortunately, I actually can't do it in this Telnet application, but I can show you the principle. If you type help, you'll see there's a command called image JPEG and image PNG that we can use. So basically, the way you should do it is to write image PNG number one equals, and then there'll be some text here. And that is base 64 encoded content of your image. Let me show you how you can actually um, create that on a Mac and it might be different on PC and otherwise. And you, you might also find online resources that can convert a file into base64 encoded. Uh, I have something called base64, a little application that takes an input file, uh, which I can, uh, I, I have a PNG image here in my uh, downloads folder um, like that. And if I do that, I take this small PNG image and I get this text string out of it, which is a six bit uh, ASCII only character string, which could be then pasted in. So actually, if I now connect it once again, I would basically, sorry, um, just connect with netcat here. And I would be able to write image PNG 
image png number one equals and then paste in this string but it won't work because there's a limit to how many characters I can input in this way. So what I have done instead is um, I have a little application over in my code editor that I can use. So let me just quickly find that. Okay, so I have basically, um, this is something you can ask ChatGPT to do, but I have this little Go application that connects to not my local host, but I wanna connect to my blue pill here as a TCP server. Okay, so I have set this up. There's a function uh, send text, and this send text function is basically you see the image PNG. I can then it, it's sending that text string over, and I can now paste in that string that I just got. Um, I also have already prepared another string where that is setting uh, image JPEG number two, and that also has a little longer text string here, but it's same principle. Just do it for a JPEG image. So I will save this and I will go run and then it's called test TCP server like this. Okay, so I'm sending it, right? So it's sending these two over now and there is a way to test that this actually arrived and that is using test2. So um, test2 is an application just for your information that also runs in a terminal like this. I, I just minimized it here, so I have it running here. Um, if I, yeah, so it's it's a binary application you can download called uh, IBM test tube, and you can download that from our GitHub uh, website of repository. Uh, we have compiled versions um, right there. And here you can actually see all the, the booleans. You can see the, um, the integers that we have. Actually, let's take a look at the integers. You open up the dimensions and then you can go to integer number. What was it? I think we were manipulating. Um, you know, this one was, what was it? Let me see if, if we just send it over. It was integer number 10, okay? So integer number 10, just scroll down to integer number 10, 252. You see if I change this value, um, let's see if I send it, you can see it's actually reported to the connected clients. It's also reported over here. So test tube is like a, a door into all the parameters that I have in this device call. And that goes for images as well. And that's what I wanted to show you. So actually the two images I just sent over, the one for the PNG, if we scroll up, you see that the first PNG image that I sent over using my little application was this, uh, this icon. And on the JPEG side, image number two was, was this one. Uh, we can, uh, just to absolutely convince you, hopefully I would be able to now repeat the same and say, okay, let's send this one over as JPEG image number three instead. Save, let's run this just once again real quick so that I can see it's sending over the JPEG image number three. We should be able to go back to the test tube and see that the same image is now put into number three. So in other words, I've shown you that although I can't do it with the, the, the text-based uh, hand-used terminal, I can still send a TCP message with a base64 encoded image JPEG or PNG that gets into the device core sitting right here. And now the next step for us is to put that onto this display. Now, unfortunately, as we have seen already, um, uh, Oh yeah. If I if I click this one, um, I am not able to, as I prefer to actually set this value uh, fully correctly um, using the UI. So I'll need to go into the JSON. But this is going to work anyway. So inside the JSON code, we have the yeah. It was an IO reference. The icon file is irrelevant because that was when we tried out the icon version. So the IO reference, then I hold down control, press space so that I see options. I uh, pr uh, choose raw. Then I type in basically the um, the IO reference, which is on this form. Um, I can remove this one because it it's just a placeholder uh, that we are not using. So we uh, device call Skyhoy TCP server slash 10, which is the device index that we used. And now I need the, the parameter of name. So if we take JPEG, for instance, you see the parameter name is found here in my uh, device code. It's actually the same as the parameter that or the, um, the, the key that is being used over in the TCP client. So uh, I made sure that these are the same. Um, but this is actually where you would find that information if you needed to get it from the test tube. So I'll, I'll type that in slash and then we need the dimension indication, which is which one of these images is it. So it could be number two or number three, obviously. So I would use three like that. Are you ready? Save. And there we go. We see the image. Okay, so um, 
that that was pretty pretty easy, right? Uh, I would be able to also find um, a setting like image fitting because the image here is 200 pixels wide. I know, so image fitting will allow me some options. Uh, again, I use Control Space to see options here, so I could choose uh, fit and save, and that would give us a different uh, fit for this one. You can also use fill, for instance, that would uh, space it differently, or you can use that one called stretch, and that will basically scale it out of proportions. Now, um, there are ways to get knowledge about what this display size is. It's 96 pixels times 64 pixels. So if you want to make your thumbnails and images perfectly match the size of the display. You should, of course, do that also to save bandwidth and so on. So for the PNG, we could basically do the same. I could um, pick this one up here. So let's just quickly try that out. Go to default feedback, graphic source, IO reference. Uh, let's go to the JSON code because now we need to do that same little uh, exercise. Uh, we choose raw, DC, or maybe I can Type it in. Okay, I could not. DC colon skahoy tcp server slash 10 slash image png in this case. And was it number one? I think like that. Okay, let's try save. And we get that icon onto the display here. Although it was actually uploaded as a color graphic, but it gets converted into a monochrome graphic in, in this case. So that was a way we can get thumbnails in. Could you replay video? You can try, but I wouldn't do it on multiple displays, of course, because there are resources allocated to updating uh, data through Reactor, and you couldn't play back video on multiple of these displays. But you could probably get away with some, some sort of it, but I would suggest that you use it mostly for icons or updated thumbnails and uh, very, very low frame rate uh, video images. Uh, anyway, it's possible, and it's uh, quite cool that we can do it. Next thing I want to show you is the string matrix. So actually, now that we already took test tube in here, you, uh, I, I, I don't think we need to talk about integers and uh, the option list because we have seen that. Uh, a cool thing is if you go in here and you look at the option list that we have, uh, then you also see the, uh, the limitations we have done. For instance, we used option list number two in the previous video, and we limited it to these options uh, by using, uh, actually, we sent this command over in this video. So there you can see. The, the available options uh, can be simply manipulated from, uh, you know, from our connected TCP clients and it gets into the device core. And this is what Reactor reads up. This is why Reactor knows that these are the three options that we want to use for option list number two. And you have 200 of those. You could basically create any type of parameter in this way. Um, but if we go into strings, you see we have a string title and string value. I've not spent time on this, but this is actually like, it's, it's just uh, two registers of 200 strings in each uh, designed to be pairs where you have a title and a value that could go along if you want to use it in this way. But string value is different because it has dimensions, which are first dimension is there are 20 dimensions here. And then inside of each of these dimensions, you have another 200 strings you could use. So what do I mean by that? Okay, let me give you an example. So now we are in, let's take dimension number three string number six. Let's take that as an example. And then we write the name of a fruit we like. And here is another fruit. Okay. Don't worry about that. I am not sure it uh, is. No, it's, it's not important. It's, it's an area of the test tube is like a debugging tool. Notice what happened down here. In our connected clients, we see string matrix number 3.6 and 7 has now these labels. To put the string labels in, I want to create new pages for that. So I'll just make, create an additional page here, string labels. All right, so pages is basically a way to use Reactor and the configuration engine, having a simple page paradigm, like you know from other systems where you have like control panels like a Stream Deck and so on that you can configure. So going between these pages give me now a new page where I can put stuff. So uh, on this fresh page, I want to put my string, string labels down. So I just drag across these. I, uh, I, I click, uh, no wait, I just drag across because then up here I would simply uh, select all parameters here and um, then I would go with show more and I would also put in a text title. Okay, so um, yeah, here I would basically add a dynamic value. So let's um, go to the device call. We select, 
you type in string, string matrix value, and then the first um, dimension should be three. The second dimension could be, uh, we could choose six, basically, submit. And now what we see is that the title of um, every one of these, actually, I rather want to have them just as, so I just cut that and put it in here instead. So now, um, yeah, okay, I did not manage to get it out of there. Okay, so that, like that. So now you see the, 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 the tiles here. Now it's the same for all six of them. And then I can, of course, go to each one and then I can modify the actual reference to the string number. You know, choosing number seven would give us number seven here that says pears instead of apples. So uh, as I do that, you see this has now updated and so on. So actually, um, it's just so in other words, it would be possible for you from this TCP client to basically create a number of favorite fruits that you uh, like. Um, well, that was not my intention. Let's quickly correct that mango and sorry, uh, we'll type in number nine would be banana and number 10 orange. All right. Yes. Okay. Uh, now you see these values have actually appeared inside our test tube. So they should also appear over here. Let's just quickly correct this for all known cases. So this would be number eight. And it's updated number nine. Please. Uh, okay. And this one number 10. And then yeah, we do have the final one. But let's just delete the behavior on this so that we just have these uh, five to care about here. Okay, so um, <clears throat> then another thing that I want to show you is that these strings can actually uh, because we since we have a matrix, what is the point of having this matrix that is that um, for string number six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 here, they are in dimension number three, what if I had something in dimension number two on the same position. So like, for instance, string number six would be music instruments. So instead, guitar. Don't worry about this little notice, but it's gonna happen every single time. Okay, so we got this. It's good. It's just a debugging tool, right? All right. So um, my my idea would be on this one, let's just slap down an integer that we used to choose between these two. So I could now um, take my parameter like I've done before and say, okay, let's take integer number 30. And so I put that on here. And over here, I would say integer number 30 equals to three. So we put that number in. And then I also want to define a range for integer integer range number 30 equals two colon three. So now I have range between two and three for this integer. Let's just test it out because by default, it's probably going between these two number two and number three. It's going between these values because um, that is now the range that is is valid for this integer. But now I want to use this integer to drive the the label that is being shown here. And and this is just like standard Skahoy stuff that you can do on IO references when it comes to the dimensions inside these. So inside this dimension here, I wonder if I can actually it. Yeah, it's is it possible? From this menu, you can't do it. But basically, instead of inserting a literal value like three, we, we need if we put in the value two, you know what will happen, then of course, what will happen is that it's now picking up. Ha, huh. okay, let me just check here. What is our values, we should have in our string matrix on this one 2.6, it should say something else, right? Oh, so seems like my little editor had an issue. Ah, okay, it's because I need to pick it like that. So now it looks right 2.6 and it will show me guitar. Perfect. All right. So uh, but basically, instead of that, it's possible to insert uh, an IO reference here. So um, and if you want to do that with the reference to the actual device call, this is advanced guys, then you use curly braces, you would type in DC Skahoy TCP server, 
slash number 10 slash integers slash and we need integer 30 because it's integer 30 that is going to drive this dimension of the um, of, of the IO reference. Okay, so what do we have now? If we uh, try to move this forth and back, you see two, three, two, three. The integer 30 that I'm changing on this button is now being used to select which label am I getting from my string matrix. In other words, it chooses between dimension two and dimension three. Whew. So that's pretty cool. Um, I know it might be a little bit, I mean, you need, you need to understand what's going on to see the potential and you need to convert that into, oh, I can use it for this. But examples could be string labels for presets on multiple cameras where you need such two dimensions, one to drive the camera number <clears throat> and another one to drive the preset number. This is how you could use it just as one example, but um, there might be other cases. We just made this feature available for you and you are able to dynamically control the indication of which dimension it is that you're using in the parameters. So of course, to uh, actually really uh, finalize uh, this example. Um, I think I would uh, leave my uh, section view here and go into the tree because right now I just feel the urge to really quickly get some stuff done on that configuration. So let me just real quickly see here if I go to my layers and uh, you see we have Oh, it would be inside this layer, right? Um, this is where you see the IO reference that I just created. But I want this one <clears throat> also to number zero. So this is where the UI is is uh, is not going to, you know, for for duplicating this basically onto number two and three and so on. It would just be easier for me to do this inside of JSON. So I would take this string and then you notice it's the number seven that I need to update on each, uh, or update the number six to seven in this case. Uh, update the number eight. Um, or of course, I could also just take you know this string, which is what is actually giving me the dynamic dimension, and just paste it in here. Yeah. So let's let's just do that real quick. Save. I close this editor down, and then we are back here. Um, let's s turn on the uh, simulation. So you see now we see the fruits, and now I change back to value number two, and we see all the music instruments. Fruits, music instruments, fruit, uh, fruits, music instruments. So this is string. Um, a string the string matrix we saw the uh, icons as well uh, back on 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 page uh, on the background page here and um, we have also been looking at the test tube that allows us to manipulate these values because especially strings yeah you can manipulate them from the connected client you can also do it from test tube but test tube is a window into the contents of a device core and that would be true for cameras atom switches and you know whatever else you connect interact so the test tube is is able to do that but you'll have to read about that separately i just want to highlight the uh, the, the fact that we have this tool that which is uh, pretty cool for debugging and um and then it's up to you how uh, and if you want to use it i have a few times by accident kind of uh clicked onto this page it's our Skahoi Wiki. It has an article on the TCP server device call. And um, this is, uh, of course, a place that you should go check out. Just read. This is basic. It's um, not even trying to cover anything as complex as what we have done in this video. But it gives you a simple example of how it works. So great place to, to go and um, just get some basics of the TCP server device call if, if you need that.